and welcome to the Raw Vegan Guru channel where we are raising our health consciousness. One thought at a time, one action at a time, and one meal at a time. So here we are today in uh, my studio kitchen um, and we are going to be doing something a little bit different than the usual raw vegan uh, recipes and ideas that I speak about and enjoy myself. Today we're going to be doing a little cooking. So a few times a year uh, for me cooking might come in. Uh, I love the eggplant. We got to cook it. I love some beans and some rice sometimes. I get crazy. Got to cook it. Uh, I love the potatoes. And today we're going to be working with ferns. So ferns are beautiful little hardy vegetables. Um, I think that's what they're classified as from the fern plant. So as you may know, when you go into the wilderness a lot here in the Northeast, uh, where there's a lot of ferns in the wild, and I always love that lushness. I, I really enjoy the fern. I actually have some uh, fern plants and hanging baskets outside as well. It's just very um, warming to me, very cozy feel. It's kind of like walk barefoot into the woods and lay down by a fern or lay on a fern. It's like a pillow. So I dig it. So the reason why we have to cook some items and it can't always be raw is because certain things are undigestible. So it wouldn't really work to eat raw. Uh, let's say you could eat a sweet potato. If you shredded that, that could be eaten raw, but Personally, I like it better cooked. Then let's say butternut squash. You could also uh, shave that thinly or do like a raw pasta out of that. Um, that would be digestible and able to do raw. But again, I really like that to be cooked. So certain things have their place in being cooked. Now, another thing, when I was younger and I was starting this raw journey, I thought everything was to be eaten raw. Um, I've done it all and tried it all and I used to put raw mushrooms on top of my uh, salads a lot and I would have um, kind of a form of indigestion. I, I, would, I would feel bloating or I'd feel gassy and at the time I didn't realize uh, what I was doing. I also was using different oils back then so I was uh, learning that you got to know what you're doing and you got to take it slow and you got to keep it simple and definitely always do your research and look into these things. Hence why I've created this channel and there's so many other great people out there who have taught me so much and are teaching you so much about what works and what doesn't. So this is very different today. I believe it might be my first video ever doing a cooked dish. So don't worry, I didn't fall off the wagon. Sometimes I do cooked things and um, I dig it and I love it. Sometimes in uh, you know the winter, I will do more cooked foods and I love making my Indian dishes and I like to play around with other Middle Eastern cuisine and uh, I've done some Moroccan. I've got just gotten into it. I go around the world when it comes to eating these meals and bringing in these spices and these different elements. So even though I'm primarily raw, sometimes you just got to find a little uh, give and take and a little balance. So today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to cut the fern, prepare it, then we're going to pan sear saute um, the fern with some beautiful mushrooms, main grown mushrooms. I have some lion's mane. I think I have an oyster and these guys, I love these chestnuts. To me, they're buttery and a little sweet. I could eat a whole heap and pile of that. So I'm going to keep it simple with our ingredients. Of course, we're going to bring in uh, some spices. But let me get uh, right over here behind the camera. Let me just get this low heat on my pan. So I'm going to be using a larger pan here for my stir fry, my fry pan. And let's start cutting these fiddleheads. So let's get uh, the camera going down here so you can see a little bit better how I'm going to do it. I have my fiddlehead and as you can see we have this what this is called I believe is a frond frond right here. So it's a little uh, roll reminds me of Candyland a little 
And that is going to be the beef and the meat of what we're doing here today. So in the wild, these will pop up in the springtime and they will be meaty and hearty and thick and nice. And then they will start to thin out just a little bit and unroll. And that is going to begin the formation of the fern plant. Now, when I have gone into the woods to pick my own fiddleheads in the past, I've made grave mistakes because you also have to really know what you're doing because there are other plants that look similar, that are smaller in structure. So this is quite specifically a nice wild fiddlehead here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off that tail so that I'm really just keeping this uh, round meaty head. That is what I want to work with. You can eat this fibrous stalk, but I find it just a little challenging to digest even though I'm gonna be cooking and softening softening this up. I still just like to play with these fiddle heads, literally fiddle head. So this dish is going to be in honor of a, a great two men and chefs I know, Chef John and Chef Brendan, for sharing these fiddle heads with me. I did not go into the wild and pick them. They were actually a gift from two brothers that I got love for. And they're gonna succeed in their journey. And I'm just all about what they're doing. They have such talent. And they gave me these fiddleheads. So I said to myself, you know what? It's time to teach my community how to work with these guys because this is not the norm. So where are fiddleheads located? I'm not gonna say for sure. I'm not a scientist, but I do observe. I can tell you that they are in the north east and specifically i can tell you that they are in maine a lot of people in maine each spring will pick the fiddle heads and some people will freeze them uh, for the future use because it's kind of a short season when i've seen them in the uh, health food store it would be um, there for maybe two weeks and then it's gone. And they're not cheap either. So you gotta know somebody in the know. Now I know that I believe Chef Brendan had picked these himself, being in the game, knowing what to do and how to forage. So that's pretty darn cool. All right, so now I'm going to, I have my pan heating. And I'm going to now add my oil. What oil do I use? I use a nice um, organic, cold-pressed, and unrefined coconut oil, personally. I used to use olive oil, but I have found that this is a lot lighter and healthier, absorbable oil to use pretty much for all my cooking. And if you say, hey, does that give a little coconut taste, a little coconut flavor? Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you, it's not olive oil, and I like it. All right, so now I'm going to get that oil heated in the pan. I will turn the camera over there when I'm done. I just wanted you to be able to see right here how I am cutting these fiddle heads. So I'm almost done. I'm going to put the fiddle heads in my frying pan before I do my mushrooms because the mushrooms are going to soften up and they're going to cook um, a lot quicker than the fiddleheads. These fiddleheads are kind of fibrous and I really want to soften them up. I don't want to do a high heat. I want to do just about a medium heat and make sure that's going down cool. And I'm not so sure how long this dish will take to soften up. Now, another interesting thing when we talked about cooked foods is that you always have to cook those mushrooms and soften them up. Um, you could use them raw if you pulverize them for like, let's say a tincture or medicinal uses. But when it comes to um, ingestion, digestion of mushrooms, you need to soften those up. Not to mention, 
that once you cook those mushrooms, that is going to release the vital components that make mushrooms one of the most potent, vital, and inspiring, nutrient-dense, miracle substances on this planet. Mushrooms not only strengthen your immune system and help your entire body to operate in a harmony and a anti-cancer uh, forming uh, neutral balance, but they also contain a lot of vitamins and minerals that you are not getting in many other places, not to mention the absorbability. Mushrooms are a powerhouse. I'll tell you, if you were to eat mushrooms every day, you would have a lot less problems. Now, I will use mushrooms in varying degrees like powders in my teas uh, quite often a few times a week but the big thing is once I start to feel a little bit sick I'll always make this incredible creation in a in a pan uh, a frying pan where I will just dice up mushrooms some uh, raw garlic and raw onion on top of that after it's cooked and I'll eat a bowl of that and pretty much each time that brings me back out of it because it really is reboosting my system. So let's look at what fiddleheads have when it comes to nutrients. I wrote down a little list. We have vitamin C, we have potassium, we have mangan manganese, not manganese, manganese and we have uh, antioxidants, beta carotene. We have vitamin A. Vitamin A is really important for your eye health. And it also has beta carotene, which is a very uh, powerful antioxidant. So it also does help um, with reducing diabetes. Um, what else do we have? Heart disease. And that's just because it's giving you some uh, minerals and vitamins that are strengthening the system. So they do have some trace minerals and it does have a few vitamins in the, in the well, the fern is about to say, in the fiddlehead. So that is nothing but good stuff. All right. So I have my heated pan and oil here and I'm going to take my cut fiddleheads as so and I'm gonna throw it now you can hear that so we got some heat we got some heat I'm gonna turn that down just in just a little smoother and now let's uh, toss that around let's get a little few more fiddleheads out here can you see what I'm doing I'm doing my cut in these are so amazing. These work really well too with uh, potatoes. So I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter for everyone so that I'm not uh, adding a lot of elements because the potato, though I love them dearly, would take a little bit longer. It would almost be like a hash brown kind of effect. So I'm trying to think of the simplest way for you to implement and cook fiddleheads. This is so simple. And what's interesting is when I was online, I was looking for fiddlehead recipes, just general, hey, fiddlehead recipe. And there isn't a lot out there. There's a lot of old uh, colonial, old school cookbooks that have some fiddlehead recipes. But a lot of the fiddlehead recipes that I've come across speaking with people they are ones that have been passed down through families and foragers who kind of uh, will give you little tricks to the trade. They'll say, oh, you're into the fiddlehead? Well, this is how you should cook it. This is what you should do with it. So some people will roast it, and some people will bake them and blanch them. And many will do this method of the pan fry, the stir fry the fry pan. That's really going to give a nice softening effect. So let's get the rest of these fiddles unfiddled here. Now if you have a little bit of this tail, that's okay. I just want to get rid of most of that fibrous aspect here because the way I eat is pretty fluid. 
You know, I've got my high fruit, and that's really just turning down to a nice sugar water. And then I've got my vegetables, which I'm not eating a lot of. I have my once a day, once a night vegetable routine, but I really don't have much issue with the vegetables that I'm eating. And I try to break things down to an easier way of chewing and using. Like uh, cauliflower, for example, I love to make the cauliflower rice. I, I almost pulverize it down so it's just moist and it's fluffy and I'm able to uh, take that in a lot easier than if I was doing a little hard florets. So little tricks of the trade just to make it a little more digestible. All right, soon we're going to get over to this frying pan. I just want to show you my cutting. So now I've got, let's see what we got going. Boom. Now I have my lion's mane. Now, lion's mane, I've been really getting into. It's so amazing and awesome. Now, all mushrooms are going to give you varying aspects of anti-inflammatory properties. And they're going to, as we already discussed, they're going to boost that immune system. They're going to bring alkalinity into the body. And they're just going to be incredibly uh, nutritious. But what I like about lion's mane specifically is that it has a correlation to brain health, brain function. It also helps to rebuild, repair, and assist with nerve problems, nerve issues, nerve pain. So even though all these mushrooms have anti-inflammatory properties, there's so many mushrooms. I'm no mushroom expert. I bet you there's a lot of other mushrooms that have similar qualities for certain. But lion's mane that I've looked into, it really helps with the nervous system. And I've had some injuries in my day being in physical labor where I felt my pinched nerve uh, body, I, I call it the highways, the nerve highways. As you know, I did my uh, nerve flossing video, so I'm quite now more in tune to the nerve. And anything that can help with the alignment of the body, can help with neutrality and alkalinity, is something I'm going to really focus on for, for me personally. And lion's mane helps to lower inflammation lower and lessen pain, specifically nerve pain, and help with nerve function. So that's something that really is important to me and so beneficial. So I try to bring the lion's uh, mane into my daily practices for certain, whether it's fresh lion's mane or I've been using a lion's mane powder. And I'm bringing that into my tea with some chaga. Chaga, go to. All right, so, oh, also crazy little thing. Uh, lion's mane helps with depression and anxiety, feeling a little edged, get into the mushroom. All right, so let's turn the camera over here into our cup. This is a first for the Raw Vegan Guru channel. I've got my cooking going on right here. And you can still hear me as I'm going to do my thing. All right, so... Let's start turning and burning a little bit here. Let's get a little bit higher heat. I'm going to bring some garlic into this game because that's important and that's beautiful and that's special. Love me garlic. I could talk about garlic all day and mushrooms. All right, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm again, I'm in about a medium heat. I hope uh, our tech angles are good, cool. And I'm just going to soften this up. Bada boom, dang, I'm digging it. I'm tossing, cool, all right. Let's get a little bit higher heat here. And we're just going to keep on this for the most part. Now I added enough coconut oil in the beginning so that I know 
probably won't have to add more. That's my hope. I'm always using the least amount of oil as possible when I'm making any cooked element dish. And if I'm doing anything raw, I'm only using two tablespoons or less. Now these are going to start to brown a little. I am going to sear them and it's going to be beautiful. So now I'm going to get my plating ready for what we're going to put this on top of. We're going to bring in the raw element, that's for sure, so that we can have our cooked and our raw. So now I'm going to get my bowl out. Bam. I love this bowl. Boom, boom, boom. Love it. It's great. And I'm going to get some raw elements going on here while you are watching that cook. Now, as you can see, those mushrooms are starting to soften up. So that is a great indication that we are right on course. All right, so I'm tossing, I'm turning, I'm just keeping with it. Now these lion's mane mushrooms, for example, they're so hardy. I got respect for whatever people do. I never really get into uh, the separation and judgment at all when it comes to uh, are you a vegan, are you a raw vegan, are you a pescatarian, are you a carnivore, you know, whatever people identify themselves as doing. But what I can say is something to think about. Mushrooms really are a great alternative to meat because they have that depth and that hardiness and they have that um, heavier consistency that you get in your animal products, your animal uh, flesh, tendon muscle. Um, it's almost like right now, I'm looking at this, it's like, you know, could that be a little vegan chicken? Maybe, it's got the look. But I don't want to go there because this is my whole food extravaganza. We don't play with no chicken in this household. All right. So, looking a good, guys. Looking a good. I'm softening up. We can dig it. Now I'm going to bring in my spices. I'm always going to bring in the spices. Does that mean spicy? No. It means flavor. So let's get this stuff out of the way. All right. We're going to go earthy. And we're going to go real simple here. I'm just going to get a little element of attributes that kind of will just pop this off, but still keep on to the natural flavor of the fiddlehead and the mushroom. I already have garlic in there, so I don't want to overpower. So I just did some parsley. Now I'm doing some oregano. I'm coming in with some white pepper. I've been playing around with this. I love different peppers. I love the black pepper. Sure. But I like white pepper. So let's do that. Paprika. I'm a paprika fanatic. Fanatic. Paprika. It's going to go on. It's going to go on. Boom. All right. Let's toss. Let's toss. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is all happening right here for you. I might edit out to save some time because I don't want you to have to watch the whole thing. We can get to that end game. But as you can see, that color is beautiful. I can tell I added just enough spices. I still have enough oil in there. Cool, cool. All right, let's come in. I'm going to go with my pink sea salt, pink sea salt, boom, pinch, pinch, pinch. And now I'm just going to bring in a little peri peri crushed pepper, peri peri crushed pepper, boom. All right, guys, this is the game. This is the game. Here we are. Here we are. Done. 
done, 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 done. Sweet. All right, let's get into a fiddle. Let's see what happened to the fiddle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect for softening. All right, let's come back to the cutting board. Let's come back to what we're gonna do here. Now I'm gonna have my bowl. This is what I'm gonna serve it in. And I'm going to place this over a bedding of some chopped kale. Very simple. Another great idea is if you pulverized some uh, cauliflower into the cauliflower rice, that would make a great bedding as well. So let's get our kale here. Oh kale, oh kale. How much I love you. All types of kale out there. You can grow so much kale. Um, but when you go to the store, boy, I'll tell you, you only see about mm, three varieties. You see the red, you see the lacinto, uh, dinosaur kale, and you'll see the um, green kale, the bada bone kale, the bang. All right, let's chop this up here. This is going to be so simple, guys, and it's going to be so hearty and so warming and wonderful to have a nice mushroom dish with our kale. I tell you, it's like we're foraging, but kale doesn't really uh, grow so wild in the wilderness now, does it? All right, let's get into our tomato game. I keep my tomatoes in the cupboard because it keeps them nice and dry in a dark place. I would never put them in a uh, refrigerator or near any uh, moisture because that would uh, definitely start to impact and mold out and soften. And I can keep tomatoes sometimes in the cupboard for up to two weeks, believe it or not. It's a clutch move. Same with uh, potatoes, a little bit longer storage there, and onions in the cupboard in the dark, out of the way, cool. All right, so I have my tomato here, and I'm just gonna dice this up, and we're cooking, I'm stirring. So we're almost done here. We've got a beautiful, beautiful dish right on its way. I'm loving it. This is looking really good, guys. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let's get our tomato diced. And this is going to be topped on our dish. So we're gonna have our bedding of our kale. And then we're going to place the fiddlehead mushroom over the kale and top it with our tomato. So simple, I love it. Now this, right here is going to be a little dry. So we want to bring something into this for a little bit of um, liquidity. I think that's a financial term. We want this to not be um, so difficult to maybe chew on. We want it to be able to have some moistness to it. So let's bring in today Let's go with some liquid amino, some Bragg liquid amino. It's almost like saying to me, soy sauce. It's like a little soy sauce. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit of that into the dish. And since I'm there, I always love this combination of a little apple cider vinegar. All right? So guys, we are nearly at completion of a beautiful, beautiful dish here today together. We did it. All right, some apple cider. Put about two tablespoons of that. All right, let's check in on them fiddleheads. Looking cooked and hot. Mm-hmm. All right. And as you can see here, we are really softening up these mushrooms and fiddles. So I'm gonna let that cook for a couple more minutes and then we will come back to it. All right, so now I finished cooking off my fiddlehead and mushrooms. It took about 
20, 29 minutes or so um, in order to really soften them up so that they'll be uh, more easily digestible. So let me turn off my heat here. And now, as you can see, let's get this a little bit closer in. Here are the fiddleheads and the mushrooms completely softened up and cooked, all right? Looks really good. And what I really like is that these elements absorb and take on the flavors that we chose to use here today, especially the liquid amino, Dr. Braggs. I love it because it's just like soy sauce. So while I was cooking this, I was thinking, while I was tasting it to see if it's soft, um, it really captured that soy sauce flavor. And whenever I have something going on with soy sauce, something happens inside of me that says sesame seeds. I love to bring sesame seeds into that relationship with the amino acid soy sauce element. So now I have my bowl of kale. So let's get that in view for you. Let's get over there, good. Now I'm going to take our fiddlehead and mushroom and I'm going to bring it on top of my kale. So as you recall, we have a little apple cider vinegar and we have a little amino acid and that's it. So hopefully that will be enough for some uh, moisture as we go through the dish. I'm also going to have my tomato that's always going to bring in a uh, nice um, wet freshness to any dish, especially when you're working with things like, let's say, Swiss chard or kale. They're a little bit hardier leafy green. They're not as uh, soft and um, kind of like easy to chew and break down like a beautiful um, light lettuce, like baby lettuce leaves, or even romaine. It's just a lot easier to take down, whereas there's a lot more roughage, I find, in the kale, or like I said, um, Swiss chard. There's a few other players out there. So here we have our beautiful kale, our mixed mushroom, and our fiddleheads. Look at that steam, and that is great. And you know what? If it was January, it would be even greater. But we're getting close to summer around here. I was just planting some plants today, so I'm getting really excited. All right, so now I have my tomato, and I'm just gonna bring that on top. And I definitely want those juices. Uh, you can see it dripping. I want those juices. I want some tomato water for sure. So I have my unroasted organic raw sesame seeds and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on top. Just a nice accent. I think that's a pretty cool move. So this is our final dish here today. Our first cooked, but of course we brought in the raw element raw vegan guru recipe. Sometimes there's cooked, sometimes there's exceptions. If we stick to die hard rules in our lives, we will miss opportunity. We will also miss the ability to uh, feel, taste, smell, and experience things that otherwise would be shut off by us saying it's only one way or the highway. So here is our beautiful cooked fiddlehead. Don't eat fiddleheads raw. Can you? I guess so. But that's not going to be some fun stuff afterwards. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Please subscribe, like, and share my videos and my channel. Get the word out there that we have the power to heal ourselves and to separate ourselves out of the constructs the structures, the said steel foundations of corporate, selfish, incomplete, separated, delusional, satanic, trauma-based corporations and 
basically uh, infiltrated mindsets into how we're to operate as a human being. We have the consciousness, we have the truth, we have the power to heal ourselves and to break away from things that don't align with us. So eat your raw, top it with some cooked, bring in the yin and the yang, and enjoy your day. Thanks for being here with me today. Love ya. Bye.